Hello to our audience. Welcome to our live stream of Mission Earth First, because Earth counts. We are live here at the Hagerbach Test Gallery for the Hagerbach Festival, and we have the pleasure to host this live stream in this amazing, unique mountain cavern. I'm here jointly with my co-moderator, Rudy Hilty, who is from the Hoos Institute and who is a co-founder of Mission Earth First. Welcome, Rudy. Thank you. Hello. We have the pleasure today to introduce you some really award-winning concepts of students from the Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, ETH. And uh, in fact, the students have attended my course this semester, Planning of Underground Spaces. Um, they are architecture students, engineering students, spatial planning students. And um, we've had mixed teams working on concepts of self-sustaining communities. So the students had to look at underground environments and come up with concepts for self-sustaining communities. How would they survive in these communities? How would they deal with energy concepts? How would they deal with light, with food, and um, with a lot of other important factors that you'll hear about in a minute? So without further ado, um, I will now um, call on stage the first group. But before they come on stage, I want to also tell our audience, you will have the opportunity to interact with us and to engage with the students and with Rudy Hilti and me in the live chat. So if you have questions or comments, please put them in the chat and we will pick them up after each of the three presenting teams. So now please, the first team on stage, Victor Zahn and Stefan I. They have, um, welcome here, they have, um, won an award from our jury for um, their concept, Self-Sustaining Underground Community on Mars. And they will present this now to you, and we will take your questions afterwards. Go ahead. So hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on Self-Sustaining Underground Community on Mars. So during this semester, we thought about how we could create this kind of underground community, community and what do we need to test, to test the feasibility of this solution? And what can we test here at the Hagerbach Test Gallery? So the first people that will arrive on Mars, they won't only have their spaceship, it will be the only pressurized environment on this planet. But we believe that over time, if we want people to live there on the long term, we need an environment that is bigger and safer than this only uh, small, tiny spaceship. This is why we believe that one good solution is to create an entirely un pressurized underground space. So the first thing to do is to excavate a cave, of course. On Earth, we would then guarantee the structural safety of this cave with um, jetting or injection or any other technical solution. However, on Mars, we don't have these building materials on site and it won't be almost impossible to transport everything from Earth. This is why we have, will have to use locally derived geological. Mat uh, we will have to use locally derived ge uh, geological materials. Once we have created this uh, cave, we need to make it airtight. And then there is one interesting concept proposed by Fourth Planet Logistics that proposes to use drones to scan their, a cave and then create an inflatable module that fits this specific geometry. We are then able to deploy this uh, module in the cave and to create this pressurized, uh, this airtight environment. Once we have this airtight envi environment, we need to fill it with air, obviously. An air that is sustainable, suitable for human life, needs to have the correct chemical composition, temperature, and also, uh, also pressure. Um, but the, however, the first big challenge is to create this initial amount of oxygen, because it will be too difficult to transport this amount of oxygen from Earth. 
So there's a lot of research that is done on this topic, and the NASA tried rec um, used recently a device called MOXIE that you can see here on Mars, and they were able to produce a few grams of oxygen uh, by using the carbon dioxide that is present in the atmosphere. Once we have this initial amount of oxygen, we need to create circularity. This means that we need enough plants or machines that are able to transform the carbon dioxide produced by humans or combustion into new oxygen. We also need sensors to monitor this system and filters to avoid any contamination. And we believe that this whole oxygen cycle is something that, could we, that could we could very well implement and test here at the Hagebach Test Gallery, since we would be able to recreate this kind of underground environment. We also decided to group three important topics together that are waste, food and water. One core concept here is to use as little water as possible in order to um, increase the sustainability of our uh, system. We also decided to integrate the aquaponic cycle in order to increase the adaptability of this uh, at here at the Hagebach Test Gallery. So we came up with this water cycle where we have only a limited supply, supply of water into the cycle. We could, this could come from ice that we can find on Mars, but however, water is then still a scarce resource. We could then use it for cooling, for example, cooling a data center like the one we have here at Hagebach. And uh, then finally, this warm water can be used for human usage or uh, to warm a building. And this water that is still clean can then be used for the underground farm or injected directly into the aquaponic cycle where we have a fish tank that produces food, but as waste, but this waste is then used by bacteria to transform it into nutrients for the green farm. The green farm that again filters the water that can be re-injected into the fish tank. Finally, we were also inspired by, the inspired by the International Space Station, where they collect water that condensates on the inner surface of the space station. Here we also lose a lot of water due to condensation, uh, due to evaporation of the plants or humans that are breathing, and this water could condensate on the inner surface of the cave, be collected, filtered, so, we can, so that we can reuse it for another cycle. To allow an Earth-like living on Mars, uh, different sources of energy are, uh, sources are needed in order to have electricity and warm water. We thought about sustainable energy sources such as solar thermal energy, as you can see on this uh, picture on the left. Uh, solar thermal energy is gained by uh, collecting the sunlight uh, via mirrors placed on the surface. Uh, which reflect the sunlight and collect them to a light tower. Um, in there, um, um, a liquid is um, heated up and the steam is developed, which would activate a wind turbine. And from this, electricity would be um, uh, developed. Uh, however, this process, we think we could modify it by uh, taking this sunlight, this gained sunlight, from the tower and transfer it via light tubes, as you can see here, uh, into the cave and warm, heat up a water, water tank, water in a water tank. And also it would be possible to have uh, sunlight in the cave by also producing uh, light tubes directly um, to the cave, as you can see on the, in the middle. Um, in the Hagerbach uh, testing gallery, one could uh, investigate these light tubes and this transfer of light in this light tube because um, this transfer is related to energy losses and this needs to be further um, so researched. Um, for ele electricity, we thought, again, as uh, for a sustainable um, energy source as w for wind turbines, um, this we would. These this are located at the top, and the produced energy, electric energy, is then as electricity is then transferred via fibers into the cave, as you can see on the right. Um, in the Hagebach uh, testing gallery, we, we could test exactly this mechanism here, 
uh, because and also the, the the performance of these wind turbines because um, high um, sandstorms are expected on Mars. So we also th uh, thought about um, bladeless wind turbines. And it would be also interesting to investigate these fibers, this, the, uh, the, which transfer this electricity into the cave, because we have high temperature gradients over uh, at Mars, and this, is, this ref um, affects uh, the electricity transport. Another way to produce uh, electricity is via the geothermal energy sources from Mars. This, is also, um, uh, this would also have a steam uh, would, uh, which would uh, activate a turbine, you can see on the right uh, bottom, and from this we would gain also electricity. And with all this gained electricity, we could also have uh, place lamps as additional um, uh, lighting up for the cave, and we could then install, uh, uh, grow plants with it, and with these plants we could also have this additional uh, uh, as we have a thermal energy uh, and uh, out of this waste and also for the oxygen production uh, source. So, as a summary, we can state that the Hagebach Testing Gallery is a really interesting um, infrastructure for investigating all these mechanisms for energy tr transfer, for heat and electricity, uh, food and the food water cycle and oxygen production as well as a new living for the, uh, in, the cave, in a cave on Mars. Thank you very much for your attention, and we are here for questions. Thank you very much to um, this group. Rudy, come back on stage yep. as well, and maybe you guys can move a bit to the center. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think this um, was a very convincing uh, concept. The students really thought about um, all the various factors needed and grouped them and really looked at a, a circular system. Um, let me first check if there are questions from the, from the chat, Rosanne, so far. Yeah, so first of all, I want to say super well done. It was Thank a great you. presentation. Um, there are no questions in the online chat yet. Um, I'm going to look here into the audience. Is there anyone who has a question? Yes, I see one here. Oh, <laughs> there was not a question, sorry. So if there are no questions, actually, I want to turn to uh, Rudy Hilti. Mm -hmm. He's the creative co-chair of the Hus Institute, a think tank from Liechtenstein. And um, he's actually very involved in implementing um, spacey ideas, let's put it that way, here in the Hagerbach, but also elsewhere. And Rudy, what, are your, what is your impression on this? And what could you be able to pick up? Mm -hmm. um, what would you like to ask the students? And really well done. I like the concept. Thank you. It's super lean, but smart. Thank um, you. Thank and you. I think that's what, we are, uh, what is needed. And, uh, but the, uh, one question I have, because you told us you only have one spaceship. Mm -hmm. You go... Are there several steps, or you try to put everything in one spaceship with all the solar thermal and wind turbines, or are there several steps? Planned? There are definitely going to be more steps than just one spaceship, but uh, the idea is really that um, it is not possible, we believe, we believe at least, that it's not possible to live uh, only in a spaceship, um, in a tiny spaceship, on the long term. So this is why we wanted to offer another option with this pressurized underground cave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this concept of the pressurized underground <laughs> cave is really something we need to explore further, and that has been ex is being explored, as you said, but that would be very um, doable and feasible also to test here, Definitely. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what do you think? What's more important, to recycle the air or to create air, ah, oxygen? Uh, yeah, creating oxygen also requires a lot of uh, energy, and so um, recycling is probably the most viable solution over the, over the long term, but we probably also need a supply of clean oxygen or fresh oxy oxygen, but I don't think this should be the main supply. Also, if we have enough uh, energy from this, mm -hmm. our sources, maybe we could uh, f further uh, research on this um, developing 
gaining uh, oxygen. Excellent. Um, I really want to thank you for, for attending this event, but also for attending uh, my class this semester for coming up with this really fantastic concept. Thanks also to your colleagues who can't be here today. And um, you're getting a certificate, an award certificate, um, signed by Mission Earth First and Rudy Hilty. Maybe you can um, <laughs> hold it up so the camera well can done. see okay. it. Uh -huh. Group so. finalist uh, award, um, self-sustaining underground community on Mars. An applause to the group. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor and Stefan. And now, I'm sorry, I would like to call the next group on stage. We have um, the group um, Hagamars Hotel. And um, we have three students presenting. Um, we have Dominic Walser, we have Nikola Nikolov, and we have Elias Evi. So welcome for coming. And, um, the, the stage is yours. We'll take questions afterwards. Here is the uh, clicker. Thank you. Hmm? So, hello everybody and welcome to our presentation of our research on Hotel Hagemars, which is a concept on how to enable a self-sustaining community on Mars in the future. So first of all, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what we're going to present today. And I'm going to start with a quick introduction on the theme and how we got there and why we chose what we chose. Then my colleagues are going to dug a little bit deeper into our core themes, which are air, light, food, and the impl implementation on a hotel on Mars, but the test here in Hagerbach. So with climate cha change, increased wealth, and population growth in the future, our Earth is going to come to its limits in order to make living on Earth possible. So we think about maybe building new colonies on other planets, but as they are very hostile for us, we need to do a lot of research on how to make them uh, sustainable and li livable for the human race. But we also thought about the sustainable de development goals on Earth and that they should be kept in mind as well on Mars. So we filtered out seven vital human needs, which can be seen here, but we only dug deeper into the themes of light, food and air generation, as the, they are key and can also be tested on Hagerbach. And we also discussed how the implementation of a hotel would be useful to study the psychological impacts on the human in order to live on the ground. So starting with uh, air, we really thought about how we could bring air into an isolated climate. And we did a bit of research and found uh, uh, algae that are called cyanobacteria that basically produce oxygen while they do photosynthesis. And we thought it would be a really interesting way to produce oxygen for uh, Mars. And also that would be a super interesting or implement, implementable way to do research here in Hagerbach because the system could be really easily installed and surveyed how well it produces. Basically, you can see an illustration of what it is. Here, it's basically uh, transparent tubes that have the algae and the output is basically gas, which contains uh, oxygen that we can breathe. So this, is what, this was our approach on air. Uh, then going on to light, uh, we really had a lot of discussions about light and artificial lighting or, and real lighting. And we came to the conclusion that uh, real lighting is uh, super important for humans and uh, for us. And we wanted to implement this also in our hotel. And uh, one solution that we found, uh, how to bring light underground, uh, is with uh, this system. It's basically um, light panels that capture the sun and through optic cables, uh, transmitted uh, down into the earth. They can go really for uh, kilometers long because with, any, with virtually uh, any loss of light and basically you have, uh, you follow the cycles of the sun also when you're underground. And these light sources during the night, they would be turned on with solar panels that are charged during the day. But it was really important for us to uh, also 
underground be able to follow the light cycles and the sun also on Mars and here in Hagerbach. Then about food, uh, we research like sustainable systems of food uh, and food production. And one system that we thought fu functioned really well because it provides uh, vegetables, but at the same time fish, is um, aquaculture. Uh, it's, and hydroponics, it's a combination of the two, and it's called aquaponics. And basically, uh, the fish produce nutrients for the plants, which are recycled, and the plants produce nutrients for the fish. And this system can very well be implemented here, also in the Hagerbach and tested, since I believe you already have fish here. Uh, then uh, all of those systems are also learning experiences for Hagerbach and for uh, the people that visit the hotel, and we're going to go now to explain our concept of the hotel. So, because we have so much technology in order to enable life on Mars, uh, we wanted to propose a hotel, which could be already uh, installed in Hagerbach, as um, an accommodation for guests and workers, but also to see how life on, in an underground cavity on Mars has psychological effects on its inhabitants. Um, and uh, yeah, we have potential studies which we could do um, concerning human well-being uh, that we could already test in Hagerbach, as example, um, natural versus artificial light, as we propose these fiberglass cables, um, but also the room shape and um, activities and physical exercise demand. Next. And we have proposed um, this kind of uh, section for the Hagerbach Hotel, and it makes use of a quality which underground space has, which overground building does not have at all. And this constraint is like the, the constraint of the level. And we don't have this constraint of the level at all. That's why we propose a big dome, which has a spiral ramp in it, uh, through which you can access all the hotel rooms. And we want in this, uh, in this big dome, we want to show how life is enabled. And this would serve as a kind of testing and also um, educating the public at Hagerbach about how sustainable life on Mars is possible. We have, for example, like, um, food that is being grown there. Um, but yeah, we also have the infrastructural part, which is a side. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> so Thank you very much. Yes, now would be time for the questions, I guess. Thank you. Amazing. Um, Hotel Haga Mars. This is something um, we're dreaming of doing, right? Um, on behalf of Mission Earth First, I think Rudy can uh, make a first comment on um, what, what, what he thinks about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this concept very much because we dream a lot about uh, Mars Hotel here at Hagerbach. And um, I think it's important to create something people are dreaming of. And I, I think that's exactly it is. Because if you tell it someone, or I told many people about it, that we will do it, and then they ask, can I book it already? Can I go there? Can I, I would like to be part of it. And I think exactly how you create this, this, this ecosystem, you, we could do it. And this, I think, how you made it with all, with the whole, with the, from the fish to the plants to the air, how it's working together, the closed ecosystem, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, a nice concept which could really work here at I Hagerbach. think also architecturally speaking, I mean, the statement is interesting to say um, there's completely, there's no level constraints that they experienced underground, the students, in developing this concept. So they could just really use a dome-like structure and uh, spiral up with a staircase, which would make a really interesting um, effect, right? And also be practical. So. Rosanne, do we have any questions from the chat? Um, unfortunately not, but I, I wanted to say also for this group, yeah. great presentation. And what I think is really interesting is that you also uh, thought about the mental well-being of the people. And that shows the interdisciplinarity of those projects. And I think that's, a, that's also a great key point that's coming out of, of those kind of projects that you really see that everything is linked to each other uh, and and yeah 
So that's that's really really well done uh, that you pointed that out. Thank you. And uh, I also want to ask the students maybe um, if you're p potentially interested, if we are to develop a hotel Haga Mars here to contribute with your ideas and and skills, and <laughs> we might call on you if we may. <laughs> okay. So no questions from the live audience either. Have you checked? Yes. Okay, very good. So um, I think the, con the presentation was very clear. It was very concise. Thanks a lot. And um, we, we uh, now award you your certificate by Rudy Hilti. Okay. So that was the second place in the, in the group project for Hotel Hagamars. And before you step off, please, one last question for me. How was it for you to um, develop this concept? I have to tell our audience, the students were, of course, due to the uh, pandemic, we were um, restricted to virtual teaching, and they never actually saw this space here. And I had never met them until today uh, physically. So how was it for your group to develop this concept? Was it? I think what was uh, really super interesting for me personally, and I think for the other also, is to have like this interdisciplinarity. And while we had discussion, we sometimes like left the field of the project and really learn from the other people and develop the project together, like really with different disciplines. And it was really interesting to see also other uh, ways of thinking due to our studies. I'm happy to hear that you from your disciplines are which backgrounds, each of you? Um, I'm architect. Architect, yeah, I could tell. <laughs> I'm also an architect. Architect. And spatial planning. Spatial planner. So this is really um, also the, the, the point of the course, to bring interdisciplinary to this topic of the underground space. And also for Mission Earth First, we really very much want to create uh, a very um, out-of-the-box, or how do you call Without it? Without the box. Without there the box, no box thinking. Eh? There is no box. So... Thanks a lot to group Hotel Hagamars. A big applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. And you can hand. Thanks. Thank you. So we have um, now one last group presenting. And um, I want to really call them on stage. I also want to, um, un if you can get ready, and I want to also call on our audience don't be shy. If you have questions or comments to the students after the presentation, you're welcome to, to do so. So um, now we have um, group three, which is really interesting, Project Lightbulb, Hassan Ayaz, Dominic Tassera, and Rafael Spielmann. Two of you are presenting, right? Uh, no, Rafael will join us in a while. Rafael will join you in a second. Yeah. Okay, very good. We are very excited to hear from you. I'll click to the first one, Project Lightbulb. Here you go. Thank you. So um, we want to start by thanking you for uh, attending this presentation. So what we did was um, we also had the goal to create a self-sustaining um, civilization on uh, Mars. And to do that, what we did was we um, divided the whole, um, all these different aspects uh, which are needed to create uh, such an environment uh, into different pieces. And the reason why we did this was to um, find out which aspects uh, require more testing so that we can just ex extract them out of, uh, from our project and then um, test them at the Hagerbach um, test gallery. Thank you. Um, I'm going to speak about the architecture and structure of our project. And as you can see, a cone was selected as the basic shape um, of our underground city due to increasing um, pressure with increased construction death. Um, it is the centerpiece and mainly serves as a living space for people. In its outer layer, um, cables, pipes and uh, transport systems are laid out, which lead uh, through the whole construction as a network. Starting from the cone, tunnels, are, um, tunnels with specific uses will be built. 
and the living space itself uh, should be designed as generously as possible. Attention is paid to rich greenery and lighting here in the middle, um, which should make the subsurface as homely as possible for people. The individual floors are connected with a sophisticated elevator system, um, which allows both horizontal and vertical access. For example, um, no, a function relevant to the community, um, just like monitoring with servers or um, food production, medical, medical care can each occupy a tunnel. And um, for, uh, well, the aim is um, to bring together um, in a compact form um, all the needed functions and also to create a good living space. Um, for for the residents. Well, the basic idea of the water management concept for the future Mars Hotel is to extract the water from a uh, postulated subglacial lake on Mars. And the water will be extracted from there. Uh, this water is uh, presumably very salt-rich, potentially also contaminated and also very cold, so we have to clean this water and to heat it, and this will be done in a planned uh, underground water treatment plant, and then from there it will be pumped up to the reservoir at the top of our cone-like structure. This water extraction can be tested here at the Hagerbach. We plan to inject water from the surface and then to extract it with a test water treatment plant, and then to see if this process works. Um, also, we have, of course, uh, sewage water on the planned Mars Hotel, and this water has also to be cleaned. For that, we will have another treatment plant at the bottom of our cone, and from there, the water, after it has been cleaned, it will be pumped up to the reservoir at the top again. So uh, in a structure like this, you will obviously have also a lot of pressure differences and temperature differences, and sometimes also um, uh, differences in uh, oxygen uh, levels. So what we thought was it would be quite important to monitor all these different variables, because if you have a problem, then it's better to um, at least have some data to identify the problem and solve it. So. Uh, for this, uh, we, uh, for example, if you have also a um, uh, structural deformation, this would also be very helpful um, to use. So this is uh, something which we definitely, definitely think uh, would require more testing uh, at this gallery here, because um, we don't know how uh, uh, which problems would actually occur if you have all these different variables um, which are being monitored at the same time. In order to achieve a zero-waste society, recycling is essential. We have planned appropriate systems uh, so that this goal can be reached. Accordingly, there will be no single-use packaging. Um, products will come in reusable metal boxes, glass containers, or even completely without packaging. Central distribution, distribution stations are set up for the reusable boxes so that people do not have to store them in the residential units. Organic waste from everyday life is collected and anaerobically fermented so that the resulting product can be um, mixed with um, nutrient-poor soil to make it valuable again for future agricultural uh, use. We call this underground farming. Organic waste can be incinerated if one should be required. Um, so, to facilitate all recycling processes is a microtunnel infrastructure system integrated to route um, like of uh, all kinds of recycled goods directly to their uh, specific central treatment. Another important point is the water um, treatment, an early separation directly at the source, for example, the toilet. Um, 
allows the various um, water components like excrement, urine, and water itself to be cleaned directly. For example, pathogens can uh, be filtered out, um, nutrients recovered and used as fertilizer, and uh, the water can also be then reused. Thanks to gravity-driven uh, membrane filtration, water treatment can be carried out much more efficiently. All in all, uh, a fast closed cycle can be created that makes it possible to, to achieve the goal of a completely autonomous society. So our uh, main source of energy on Mars will be solar uh, power to produce electricity, but of course during the night we'll have problems, so we plan to install batteries as well as to store the energy as potential energy at the top of our cone and then later use it during night with hydropower plants to create electricity. So uh, the last aspect that we looked at was air. And for that, we, uh, as Dominic has mentioned, we have a giant green, uh, green space in the, in the center of the structure. And so this would be the main source of our uh, oxygen. And at the top of the structure, this air would be recycled and made, again, breathable. So as you can see here, we have many other aspects that we, uh, we would like to look at. But uh, now we want to stop here and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I think um, big applause, um, especially um, this shape really caught our attention. How did you have the idea of creating a light bulb? <laughs> so um, we basically just uh, looked at the forces which would occur uh, as uh, deeper you go. So um, the, um, uh, the, force, uh, the pressure force increases as uh, deeper you go. So what we thought was uh, it would be better if we would uh, shrink the uh, structure because then you would uh, require less of the stronger materials. So uh, from that we got a cone and because you have on top again um, layers of mass, um, this uh, led to a dome shape at the top because this would distribute the uh, forces equally. And from that we thought um, this kind of looks like an ice cream or maybe a light bulb. <laughs> so then we thought, yeah, maybe we'll just call it light bulb because uh, it also symbolizes um, uh, an idea or creativity. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Rudy, your, your comment on yeah, that? Yeah, wow, I really, now I get it. At first I thought, why? why? But it makes totally sense. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's beyond, right? It's, it's different. It's, uh, uh, how did you find it out? It was uh, randomly, or you did discuss it? Or it's just, or it was the problem first, or the you had first the solution. Um, in the beginning, we tried to make it really simple. In the beginning, yeah. we just thought we would make a giant tunnel, <laughs> and okay. uh, this would be it. But from that, we thought, uh, how would it be if we have multiple tunnels that are connected to a larger space? Uh -huh. And then we concluded, okay, if we have a large space, then we have also all these forces, and mm -hmm. from the forces we derived okay. the shape. Get it, yeah. Excellent. Uh, I want to quickly ask if there are questions from the chat. Yes, we've ah. got a question. Yeah. Um, the question is, how many people could live in such light bulb? Ah. Okay. So, um, basically, it is. Uh, uh, it, we haven't uh, told that yet, but it would be like 200, me 200 meters deep. So you would have all these tunnels which are equal uh, which all have like a 20 meter diameter but what you could do would be like take this structure and connect it with these tunnels to another um, structure which is similar like this so you would actually have no limits how many people you want to uh, add because you could just it's just like modular you could right. just mm -hmm. keep adding so that 1 million people uh, for <laughs> Elon Musk <laughs> That's certainly That's then solution, a maybe. scale that <laughs> makes it feasible and, and that you conceive this in a modular way, I think, is, a, is, is, is really a valuable approach. Um, any more questions, Rosanne? I can't see you because of the light. <laughs> yes, we've got a, a question from the audience. I'm yeah? walking over there right now. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, thank you hear me? 
thank you for the presentation. It was amazing. I was asking about public space. You said that the, the smallest point um, on the bottom is like the public space, didn't you? I was asking myself why you said that it's a structural reason, but why didn't you like make the structural effort to make it broader so that you have like a larger public space at the bottom? Like, was was the ratio between making the structural effort to to make that wider? Isn't that a uh, worth it? Yeah, so maybe I can jump in here. I don't know if you can see it, but the very bottom is actually more like a technical space. So we have the um, water reservoir or some uh, research labs, or maybe we thought also to extract geothermal energy from there. So the bottom is not really a public space. It's more in the middle where you can see some kind of forest where we, we think that people could actually meet. So it's the forest space uh, pictured in green in the light bulb that is the public space. And I think that you've dimensioned actually quite sizably uh, as, a, as a proportional amount, maybe, maybe a fourth of the overall volume, I would say. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? He's nodding yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, um, it's actually um, soon time to wrap up and congratulate this group on their very good effort and very um, interesting concept, light bulb. Rudy, do you want to hand them the award certificates, mm -hmm. please? Uh, thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So thanks to group Lightbulb, a big applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> we, will, we will also call on you when, uh, when we start with, uh, with that project, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. can ask you off stage now, and I need the clicker if you have it. Thank you. Thanks. So, um, that was the wrong one. So, um, I hope that you've enjoyed these three concepts. In the course, there were 12 teams interdisciplinarily working on, this, um, on schemes like that. And it would be amazing to see them all 12 because they were all very different and, and very creative. But we've selected three to be shown here. They were the three um, best ones voted by the jury. Um, and an another one that was ex equo, um, Hotel B on Mars, um, which was shaped in the form of a B web, because a B web is completely um, strong and resilient. They unfortunately couldn't be here today. So um, that's why we had three teams present to you today. But a big uh, honorary mention also um, to Hotel B on Mars. And I um, really want to thank my students for being here because the semester is actually over and they're having exams right now. And this was an additional um, thing I asked them to do to come out here and to present this at the Hagerbach Festival as part of the Mission Earth First um, stream. Rudy and I um, had a stream already this morning on the main stage where we had the official launch of Mission Earth First where the Hoos Institute is a founding partner, then the ITA Committee of Underground Space, Itacus, which I represent today, is a founding partner, together with my co-chair, Han Admiral, who can't be here, but who is here with us virtually, and also the Hagerbach Test Gallery, and the fourth partner being SCOUT, the Swiss Center of Applied Underground Technologies. And if you couldn't attend the live stream in the morning, do watch it in hindsight. We had a very creative signing ceremony with Marcella Rupley, a Zurich-based artist who is also here in the audience physically, um, who has created a tree of hope for us. And the tree also has roots extending into the subsurface. And the roots have lights. And the whole concept shows how a tree is a giving structure and a living being and can also uh, grow in the underground and in fact as a proof I want you to go also into the inspiration arena on your way out if you're here physically which has also been launched today where which is a space 
to reflect and to get inspired and to also see growth, green growth underground. Is that so, Rudy? Absolutely. And maybe a last comment from you to our audience. I, th I think so many things what we do right now, it's many people can't imagine, but that's what we do here. We go beyond imagination. In the future, it will be the truth. It will be the, the, the new normal, but now it's just the future. And so I think that's what we try to do. We inspire people to, to go beyond. Exactly. That's the way to go. And um, we are Mission Earth first because Earth counts. Absolutely. Thank you for attending. Thank you.